Okay, so now we're at exercise 15, and we're going to be creating, in my notes here, we've got a room that's going to be 15 units by 18 units by 17, and we're going to elevate, have an elevation of five units. We're going to have a table, uh, a kind of a box, uh, a hatch, and then we're going to put six distinct figures uh, in the composition as well. So it'll be the most complex setup that we've done uh, thus far. So first thing we want to do is get our setup in. Let's put our eye level in our horizon line, in our elevation by the way, all three of them. Let's put it about a little bit lower than center because we're going to go a little bit higher in, in our elevation for our room. We're going to go 18 units. So I want to make sure I have enough enough there. So I'm going to put a little bit off center and a little bit lower than center. So I'm going to draw my first line across there horizontally, nice and clean. Again, I'll draw a little darker for you. You can draw very light. Ultra light is better. The lighter the touch, again, that you have, always the better. You'll hear me always say that uh, when we draw, when we're working with perspective. So I've got 24 inch piece of paper. I'm going to put my center of vision uh, right at 12, right there. So I'll put a little dot. That's a center point uh, for our center of vision. And then I'll put, use my triangle. We'll come up and down since we're going to scale a little bit. And we may reference to as well. When you scale, you don't necessarily have to reference. But, um, and also when you reference, you don't necessarily have to scale, but you do have a scale in mind. But well, sometimes you want to use one or the other. No one is a magic bullet. They're both I think easy to use, but yeah, that's depending upon the, the viewer and the artist. Okay, so we have our center of vision. We have our eye line, which is also our horizon line, which is also our, our elevation. Now, our elevation, I'll put over here, it's going to be ELV, and we're going to put that five units. And again, my units will be... Uh, they're going to be half inch units. So again, if you're using the metric system, just adjust according, accordingly. I don't know how many centimeters that is, um, but I know you probably can figure that out pretty, pretty easily. Okay, so I'm going to start out scaling uh, my uh, from my center of vision out to find our our, also our station point, which will be 10 units out from our center point here. So let's go ahead and scale. So I'm going to move this out of the way. So I'll start at our center point, and again, I'll go half, half inch units. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, right there. And I believe that's where I'm going to have my station point. So I'm going off, just by the way, my my drawing. So I'll do. I'll take my old notes and I'll do a refreshed version of my of my notes and we're going to recreate this come more complex scene more cleanly. And so I'll always do a diagram and I look at my diagram for help um, as I'm, I'm doing a lesson just to make sure that we were right on right on uh, schedule. So sometimes they're ad libbed and sometimes they're not. Okay, so I have my station point here. I'll put down my little male or female, depending upon your gender. There, little feet, little buttock there. So we're looking, remember, we're looking straight down at that person. Looking, he's looking, he or she's looking out in two dimensional space, and we're flapped up, 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 over at the same distance, looking into our composition. Okay, so now we'll count down five, because it's our, remember, our elevation, that's, that's uh, five, here, five, four, three, two, five, four, three, two, one, zero. And that's where our measuring line, ground line is gonna be for our room. So I'm gonna put this nice and long all the way through and over, okay? So our room is going to be uh, width-wise 18 units. And we're gonna be a little bit longer on the right than we are on the left. So. Let's start to scale. Let's scale starting from zero here over to eight units. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right there's eight units, okay? And let's scale the other way, seven. That'll give us a total of 15 units. 
in our drawing. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So that gives us seven units on this side, a total of now 15 across. Okay, so we have that. So now what we want to do, let's um, take two lines up from the ends of what will be our new room here <laughs> and also on the other side over here up using my t-square. I'm just going to draw it arbitrarily nice and high, nice and good and high. Now we're going to scale up. We need 18 units. So we're 15 here. Now we need 18 high. So I'm going to lay down my ruler here. There we go. And we need 18 units up. And so I just, I set down the line nice and even, then I pull back just a little bit so I can make my tick marks on there, or my little measurement marks. So that's one, two, three, four. There's five at our eye line, that's our elevation. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, 17, and then there we are now at 18. So then 18 now from my ground line right there. And this is important, our elevation right here is again at five, five feet. So we're locked in at five feet viewing into our composition. Now our figures will be six feet, all of them, except for we have a, a couple, or at least one that won't be. And so they will uh, be a little, most will be a little bit taller, but one or two will be a little bit smaller. We'll get there uh, in during the, uh, the latter part of the lesson. All right, so let's bring our horizontal over to the other side of the room, and that gives us now our, a two-dimensional opening into our room. So I'm going to clean up my drawing, these lines here a little bit. I'll take my eraser shield and just kind of shield off a little bit here, and I'll shield off a little bit there and there we're good to go clean that up a little bit and make it nice you could clean it up here too as well but I might need extra marks out here and I'll show you why so I'm gonna leave this for now okay so we have our station point let's find our cone of vision and just make sure how much we're inside the cone or if we're outside the cone a little bit remember how to do that you need to always know that so you need your trusty 306090 ruler excuse me your triangle and from our station point right here, remember we're 30 degrees out from our station point. So line up your station point straight along our center of vision out to and onto the, uh, the horizon line or eye level line. And so we're going to be out of the cone just a little bit, which will be great. Actually, I think that'll be good just to see that. So here's part of our cone here. So I'm going to put just a cup of tick mark here. That little diagonal line, see that? And also now on the other side of it too, as well. Let me come in a little bit now that we've got our measurements. I can, we can see what we have here. Let's come in deeper, 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 and right there we're still in. That's good. Okay, let's do the other side. Now I'm not going to draw the full cone. I'm just going to put marks here. We can start to shorthand this a little bit when you get really familiar with what you're doing you can shorthand. So the cone, our cone of vision without any distortion will be roughly right in through this area. So make sure, I just want to make sure that we knew that. We'll get most of our information in. It won't, won't, won't really affect our composition. So that'll be nice. Um, but if you like distortion, then go out, by all means, go outside the cone. And maybe one day I'll do a lesson where I, I go outside the cone a lot and you can see how funky and strange it looks, but fun if you like a lot of distortion. Some people don't. Okay, so we now need to find our last measurement. So our room is going to be 17 um, units deep. So let's put, let me put my measurements on here so we still have them. So we see them here. So we were 15 wide by 18 units tall and we're gonna be 17 units deep. Okay, 
So we have 15 units here. We need two more to get to 17. And we can go back to then a 45 degree measuring point like we've done before. So let's put two more units. So we're 15 here across, 16, 17 units right there. We're good to go. Okay, so now we need our 45, 90, 45, 45, 90 triangle. And so now we're gonna set it up on the 45. Let me do this in a different color so we can see that a little bit clearer. So now we have our 45 lined up at our center of vision through our station point, which is us, out to the world, out to and stopping at, and I'll go through just a little bit, at our eye line or horizon line. And there we are now at our 45 degree measuring point from our station point which is over here, which is number three of our four fundamentals. We still have our four fundamentals. Remember, we never get rid of them. You always, always, they're always with you. They're your fundamental four. They never go away. And so you can either draw them sometimes with you or you can relax them like we do in simple form and then relax perspective where you're just sketching. They're just implied in your own, your own mind. Okay. Okay. So now what we need now, let's project our depth back to our vanishing point right there in the middle, which also, also is our center point, our center of vision. So let's go from the corners of our room lightly back to our VP here in here so we can establish our bottom floor there and there. Let's do the same thing now with the top structures from the top of the room down below to our center, uh, excuse me, our vanishing point, running right through there. Okay, so now we're 17 units. I'm gonna put 17 over here. Don't be, don't be thrown off by the eight. That was just eight from zero right here. Here's zero, eight over. Seven, eight, 15, 16, 17 units. Now, from the our measuring point, let's go back to 17 units, go back to our measuring point, through through, boom, right through there, that's 17 units back deep in depth, right in depth into our space. So, now that we have that all important mark, now we can bring over our horizon line here, stop where it meets that convergence line or our depth line there, our diminishment line, that's what I meant to say. And then we'll bring this one up to that corner there, okay? And then we'll bring up a horizontal. We're just recreating our back of our room there. And then we'll go down. Those will meet up quite nicely. Right there, there we go. Okay, so now we have a room that is 15 units wide, check, right? We have a room that's 18 units tall, right? Check, and then now we have a unit that's 17, or a room that's 17 units deep. We're good to go now. All right, so let's work now with scaling and let's scale out our room. Let's do the floor like we did and let's also do the wall. We'll do the left wall so we can scale out. Let me sharpen my pencil, take this moment to to strengthen up your tools, sharpen it nice and cleanly, and get a really nice fine, fine point there. Okay, so let's start to now go back in depth. And I'll do that with each mark of our room. We'll go back to our vanishing point. And I'm just gonna go back to just the room, but I'm lining up to the vanishing point here. They're like, it's like we're drawing planks, but we're really drawing scale lines for us to place our figures. Now, in, you could take a shortcut, and you don't have to do all this. You could only use it where you need, but we want to go through the long process so that you get comfortable seeing and understanding the structure of perspective, and that you can more visualize these techniques more cleanly without doing all this. The trick is to start to do it, learn it, so fully that you can command your vision. You have a commanding, confident vision to shorthand 
a lot of this. And that's where it gets fun. But some, sometimes you can't if it's really complex. And that you want to be able to have this knowledge. I can't emphasize enough how important perspective is in your training. Have I, have I said that before? I don't, yeah, I think I have tons of times. For my students, for anybody out there that wants to get better at the craft of drawing and art making, and then take this knowledge and apply it to your own creative solutions, and that, that kind of thing is, is really kind of unteachable. Uh, and so that's where we want to get with our students here at MKU is so that you can really take off and be your own master. All right, let's do the top wall. We have 18 units, so we've got a long way to go here. I know it gets boring. You can fast forward me if you need, if you know what you're doing here. It's cool. And so I'm just taking these diminishments on the wall, the left wall, back to the uh, center one point, vanishing point. There and there. There we go. And over. Okay. Just try to be as clean with your pencil as possible. Sometimes if you get off a little bit, if your dot gets too big for your vanishing point, or you're off a little bit, your pencil lead, you may be off by 16th. If you're off by 32nd or 16th, you're okay. But if you start to get off like an eighth of an inch or of a quarter of an inch, you've got a perspective problem. You might have done something wrong. It happens to me sometimes when I'm trying to figure out a complex scene. I thought, uh-oh. I did that wrong. So that's why I had taking and utilizing extensive notes, applying it creatively, and then find out where your boundaries are. What do I need to go back and relearn or, or what did I do wrong and get somebody to help you when you need that. Okay, so there we are. Let me, let me draw the bottom of this room a little stronger so you can see where that division is right there. Make sure you line up nice and clean. That's a little stronger there. Okay, excellent. Now what we need now is to bring back uh, all of our marks now on our floor, right, from 1716 all over to here so that we get our 45 degree mark so that we can create our tile scaling. So let's do that now. And so remember how to do that. We're going to take all our marks going from right to left, and we're going to go back to our 45 degree measuring point. Now, if you wanted to do it from over here, you could. You just need another 45 over here, and you could start your way over. But since I've already got the 45, let's go ahead and do that here. Let me get my T-square out of the way for a moment. So I'm taking from my mark here back to my measuring point, and I'm just going to mark along the corner where the floor meets the wall. That's what I need so I can bring these over. So that's that corner there at my 15 mark. And so I'm just going to bring these all over. They're really tiny. When they get pretty far back, just try to keep up, slow it down, keep that pencil really small. And we're just making scaling. Now you could just reference these, your figures in rooms later on, but if you really want to be accurate, and sometimes when you need that accuracy, or if you just always want that accuracy, you know how to do it in both ways. You can shorthand it and get a feel for what six foot is or eight foot is, and that's fine too. A lot of times art in perspective is all about the aesthetic, the look, getting it lining up, um, and that's fine too. A lot of you, if you're good at drawing already, You've been good for a while. You know this material intuitively, and now you're learning it in a more analytical, true, kind of accurate approach, and you combine the two, knowledge and experience. And it gets you a pretty powerful kind of approach there. So we've got there to there, and just a few more to line up, and there we go. There's our marks across now. Uh, from, again, each scaling mark or baseline, if you were our ground line, over to our measuring point, which is at 45. And that'll give us 17 units deep. If you're more than 17 units deep, then you've done something a little bit off. It should be, should be easy to get 17. I'm going to sharpen my pencil a little bit here. Keep my lead sharp. I can. This takes the longest. It's the late, least creative, but it's important to get the scaling right. Now we're going to go horizontally from front to back. There's one unit. 
and two units, and three units, and four units, and five units, all the way across, six, seven, eight, now eight and a half is the center of the room, so we're about midway through the room, I think that's nine now, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and that the back one's already done for us. So it gives us our nice seventeen units. So again, you know, if you want a tile floor too as well, you got a nice equal squared tile floor and you could do designs in through there. Or you can think of it as diagrammatic scaling, which is this, which is, is for, but it reinforces good solid craftsmanship as well as accuracy and perspective. All right, now let's bring up our horizontals through here and we'll start from back and we'll go forward. Just gotta be really careful. Back in through here, just to line these up. So there's one. Okay, there's two, there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're about halfway there, that's nine, right? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, coming up. All right, 16, and then that one's already done for us, which will give us 17. All right, so there we are. Okay, so now we've got scaling for both uh, our left wall and our uh, right wall as well, so we're good to go uh, there. I don't like, I, I have one line in through here. It's okay. It's like there's a little bit more space than I wanted to, so I have to just be big. I think it'll, it'll be okay, but just make sure that you're lining up your ruler really cleanly. It should move down a little, pretty smoothly. It feels like there's one that's from in my drawing, probably not yours, but mine's a little bit off, or maybe I missed a line. I might have missed a line right through there. It's probably what I did. I think I missed missed one. I don't think I need a whole lot back there. It's so, so tiny that it gets so difficult, unless you have a big, big drawing when you get so tiny, so just, just be mindful of that. Okay, so first thing we're gonna put now in our composition is we're going to put a table um, and we're going to put it over here. So let's start in now and put that table in. So our table is going to be three by three by nine. Let me put it, just write the dimensions down over here. So let's put table and that's going to be three units by three units by nine units deep. Let's do that. Okay, so three by three by nine, and we're gonna put it two units in from our ground line here. So two units in over here, right through there. And I'm gonna I'm gonna pull in a little this camera even further. So let's see how deep I can get it a little further. So you can really see there. Alright, I think that's gonna help. Alright, so we're gonna pull in two units on the floor. So if it's three units um, in length or width, so that's one, two, three. I'm gonna put a dot there, okay? And it's gonna be three units high. One, two, three, right there, okay. So let's, let's get a little, let's get our bearings a little bit here. So I'm gonna bring this up. We wanna go three units high right there, okay? And then we're gonna go across like so. So there's the start of where our table is gonna be. It's a one point table, 
Okay, it's not two point, so we're going to have that. I'm going to give it a little bit of thickness, maybe a half of one of our units. So if that was feet, that would be about five inches thickness. Be kind of a thick table, but that's cool. Right through there. <coughs> okay. So we have that. And let's bring down our a leg here, like so. It's a little bit less than five units of the leg, and that's cool too. All right. Okay. Now the table is going to be nine units deep. So we got to go nine units deep to our vanishing point. Let's do it along here. Okay. Or we could do it along here. Or you could do it along here, which is a little bit harder actually. Let's do it along actually here is I think better. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's a little past halfway in our room. So that's nine units there. So I'm going to make that stronger in a darker line. Line it up with my vanishing point along that structured scale line. So I know that's nine units. I've got three by three by nine. It's totally, totally on. Now I'm going to project a diminishment line from the corner of my table back to the vanishing point. Then I'm just going to bring the back of the table horizontally, cleanly, over to our diminishment line. I'm going to stop right there where it meets up. Then I'm going to cleanly draw over this diminishment line right there, and that gives us our tabletop right there. Okay, there we go. Now I can just bring a vertical down from uh, the end of our thickness of our table, so we need another convergence line or diminishment line right there to our vanishing point. We'll stop right in through there, and now we just bring that vertical down from the corner to our diminishment to the end of our table, and there's our table at nine units. We have a plane now, three-dimensional plane, with our, le our leg down. Now we can bring this leg down here along this line, so we need just a nice vertical line downwards. That's three units tall back there. Then if we really want to be accurate, I don't want to get too many lines, but we could draw a diminishment line from this corner back to the vanishing point, which will get our thickness. I'm just going to guesstimate a good educated guess to save us some, some line work in through there. Now this little leg can have a thickness. If you want to give it a thickness, I might give it a thickness there and bring it up through there, and you could do the same thing in the back, but I'm going to leave it for now just to save us some some tight line work there. All right, so we have now our table, and remember that was three units wide by three units high by nine units deep. Okay, let's put, a, I'm gonna put a control panel uh, on the wall here, and that control panel, we're gonna call it control panel, just some, just a little extra thing on the wall here. We're going to make it five units deep by ten units high. All right, so let's do that. Let's see how far I want to put it in. I think I put it in at one, two, three, four units in from our composition. All right. So, and it, it is on its, we have, to, we have to think about how high it is also off of our, our composition here from the ground floor. So what I have in my notes is it's starting at elevation of about four units. So about right here, okay? And I've got it at one, two, three, four units in as well. So four units in here. Or let me do it here. Four units tall. Sorry about that. Four units tall and four units in. So one, two, three, four. The dot I need is right there, actually. Okay. So now we're cooking. So we're four units high and four units deep. That's where we start. Now we want to go five, or excuse me, ten units high. We can do that easily. Because I know you can count. I know I can count, I think. So 10 units high, so there's one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So it's a big, tall control panel. This is going to be a rebel base room with gadgets and things. That's my idea, at least anyway. I'm not going to get too detailed. So that darker, stronger line now that I drew, it's right there. It's 10 units high. Now we, I'm going to make it 5 units deep. So let's count from here. Could be 5 units or 5 feet. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There it is right there. I'll put a dot and stop. And now I can draw over there. 5 units deep. And we'll work on the other side here. We end here with one, two, three, four, five units deep right there. I put a dot, put my pencil there, and they'll line up right there. So there's our control panel, which is five by ten. Ten units tall by five units deep. It doesn't really have any kind of uh, width to it because I'm going to put it right on the wall, kind of like a a picture frame if you are a picture or painting. So there's our darkened in control panel. We'll, we'll uh, darken that in in a moment. Okay, so we've got now our control panel. Let's put a box. I'll put it down here. Oops, I'm gonna need a little bit more space up here. Okay, I see what I've got. So let's put our box. I'll put our, I'll write our dimensions so you can see it over here. I always gotta think about the camera. So our box dimensions, we're going to make five units deep by three units wide by four units tall. So five by three by four. Now let's talk about uh, how far I want to push it back. Okay, so I'm going to sharpen up my pencil. So see how also with our cone... Our cone is here, so part of our room is outside the cone. We're not getting too much distraction, but most of the action we have will be set up within the cone, so we won't get too much distortion. Now, let me count how far I'm going to start our box. We're going to put our box along the wall and build it up a little bit. We're going to put it deeper. So I've got it sitting back at, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units back. So let's count along. Let's go deep. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units. That's where I'm going to start. I'm going to make a mark right there. Eight units back, right there. Now with our box, it's three units wide. So we're going to go three units over. So one, two, three, right there. There's our box. There's the floor of our box, right there. And it's going to be four units over here, four units tall. So we've got to come over four. Now I could scale this up, but I could just look over here. So what I need to do now is I'm going to just draw a line up a little bit, like so, what I think is four. Then I'm going to double check it over here. So I've got to do my detective work. I'll come across this line right through here, and i got to go up four units, one, two, three, four, right there. And there's the height of my box right across there. So I need to go up a little bit further. So there's four units high with that line. Now let's clean it up a little bit. Bring it up to four. Now this box is against the wall. It stops right there. There we go. Let me clean off that line on the edge just a little bit so we can keep it a little, little bit cleaner. We need right there. Okay, now let's draw depth back to our vanishing point. This box is going to be five units deep. Okay, so we could say we could draw a diminishment already here and here. Okay, and here. So we're going to see a little of the top of this box, not a whole lot about a w unit's worth because it's at four units tall in depth. Remember, not here, but in depth. Now we're five units deep, all right? Five units deep here, so we have to count along. One, two, three, four, five. We'll put a mark where that unit is right there, and then all we do is come up with our vertical. We draw our vertical up right here. OK. 
Okay. There we are. Now we can tighten this up. Darken this in right here. There we are. And now we can come across and over at the end of our box to our diminishment line on the other side right there. And there we are. So we see, see how we see just a little bit of that box right there. Just a little bit of it. It's getting close to our elevation, our five feet elevation. So wherever we're looking into, we're at five feet, whether we're sitting down a little bit or we're only five feet tall, I don't really know because we can't really see us out there. We can only see at five feet, which is our eye, eye level at this point. Okay, so I'm gonna change lead. So if you need to catch up just a little bit, uh, do so. So I'm gonna change leads here, grab a new one, put it into my pencil, uh, mechanical pencil here. There we go, open it up and we'll sharpen the town. And then we're gonna put next, we're going to put our a little hatch over here. So we're good to go here. Let me erase some of the stuff. You probably can't see on your camera, which is good, or through the, through the camera lens. Now we're gonna put a hatch over here. We're gonna have a decline um, vanishing point. So it's as if, again, what we did with our last drawing, where this could open, this panel could open up and somebody could go down and crawl, go, go deeper, deeper down. Okay, so the hatch, I better put the, the, the uh, measurements here so we can see it. So the hatch is going to be size wise, so it's going to be four units wide by three units deep. And the decline, oh, that's a D there, and the decline vanishing point, I'm gonna put VPD is going to be uh, about three units in depth. Okay, so let's start here. So I'm gonna put my, <clears throat> my hatch down. I'm gonna go one unit in and one unit over. I'm gonna put a little mark there so you can see it. There we go. So it's four units wide. And so we'll go four units wide. One, two, three, four, right there. So there's where we end up, right there. Okay, so it's a stronger line so you can see it. Now we're gonna go in, it says three units deep, okay? So from the, the corner here, either corner you wanna count, we're gonna go one, two, three units deep right there. So it's very plotting with this kind of approach to an interior. So you could very much plot these out. That's what these lines are for to help you. When you Sometimes when you're designing sets or scenes, you might need some kind of ac really accurate kind of feel to it, and then you'll understand the, what how scaling is important for us. Okay, and there's the other side of our hatch, and then I'll darken this in with a stronger line right there. Okay, so there we go, we have that. All right, so let's, let's make a little thickness out of it. I'll make it maybe, this would be just arbitrary, there's no scaling to it, just visual, about that thick, right in through there. Yeah, let's see if I can come in just a little bit further so you could really see it even further. How about right there? Should work. Okay. And so let's make that, this little guy about this thick there. Okay, bring that over. And this goes from our vanishing point out. That disappears underneath there. All right, so now we've got, this thing would cover up with a hatch. Okay, and so meaning that this plane would go down. Well, well, okay, so we need a, a decline vanishing point, and I'm just going to put it three units deep from our vanishing point. So one, two, three. And remember the decline vanishing point has to be on the same vertical trajectory. That's rule number four, perspective, the rule of declines that declining forms on level ground will be on the same vertical projection as the true VP, which is here, and on a decline range. So right here at scale number two, that's where I'm going to put that. So what I'm going to do now is thrust from the back corner of our one, two, three. Yeah, there we go. Sorry. From the back corner of our 
hatch over to our our um our new decline vanishing point. So here and then here. So that hatch would be moving in this direction, like so. Now if it's three units down, I'm gonna make I'm gonna cut it off three units here. One, two, three. And so we would only see about one, two, three. I want to make it about two actually, just for visual effect. So we would come down and this the the hatch is about right. Well, it is right there for sure, actually. Uh, if we could see through, it would be over through here. So it would end up over and through here. And so we now have this declined plane at this distance. So to make it a little bit cleaner so you can really see this, I don't want to get you too confused because it gets a little bit tight in through here. So let's, let's color the, I'm going to color all this in, the little boundary thickness here. We did this in our last drawing. We're doing it again just slightly differently. So we have it there and there. And now you can see, hopefully, more clearly that plane, that hatch going into the floor downward and touching and going down into our composition. I think it's important to do these. We're going to do one more lesson after this. We're going to do a, a house so I can better demonstrate rule number three and number four in perspective. Okay. So there we go. We've got now our hatch right in through there. Let's put one more object, or not object, but one more window shaft. I want to put a window shaft up here. We're going to have C3PO and R2D2 looking in at us. They're going to be looking through another level of the floor through glass. Okay. So this window that I've got, we'll call it a window. And this be I'll put the measurements. Let's see. You can kind of see see it over here. Here we go. Right there. Okay. So we'll put. I'll put. Uh, make sure I can write it in. Window here. Okay. There we go. So the window will be six units tall by six units wide. We won't really have much of a depth. There'll be a thickness of the of the window pane, but we won't we won't I'll just eyeball that. Alright, so in my notes, we're gonna start at we're gonna put along this back wall. So we're gonna go down one, two units. I'm gonna make a mark here. Now remember it's going to be how many units wide? It's gonna be six units wide. So what I'm gonna do is just make a nice light horizontal line over like so and then find six units wide down here starting from the corner one two three four five six right there okay so now I can come in and make a horizontal line connect those up okay we've got that and how how tall was it so six units wide and we're gonna go six units tall so we've got to come back over here and count down one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll put a dot right there. And then we're going to come over horizontally. Bingo, right there. And I need a little bit more spatial depth right there. Okay, so now we've got a window unit right in through there. Now, I'm not finished. I'm going to, I'm going to show you something because we want to show a little bit of their ceiling. So they're pretty high up right there are they're like on another floor so we can't see the ground that they're on they're going to be standing r2 will be here and c3po will be over here to the side what i am going to do is put a little thickness to this wall or to this window pane here and i'm going to put it about right there that's what we'd see about right there just a straight line across All right like so okay now what i want is to see a little bit and you know, it's going to be right through this corner back to our vanishing point this line right in here we would actually see that that's the actual ceiling going back deep deep into space so we can actually darken that in a little bit just for effect especially along here and say for instance you wanted to end it and there would be another paneled room back there that would be kind of cool we could bring a horizontal over and of course I could keep on going with my scaling we could bring our scaling from our side down over here way way over and figure that out bring it up but there's really no need for that that would be just 
insane. And so here's the end of another, this is the ceiling, this is the wall, and so that would be the end. So what we need now is another vertical right there and that gives us more spatial depth and distance. So I'm going to shade this in a little bit just for now just to show our viewer that it's a little bit further away. So that's the back wall. It's kind of like this wall but back in more depth and distance and now we've got a little bit of a ceiling in through here I'll throw out a little shading on that just for, um, just for a quick effect. Okay, so I think we're done now with all of our room material. Let me pull out a little bit with our camera. Let's take a look at that, see what we've wrought here. And here's our total room, so we're good to go with our effect. I'm gonna pull this board down a little bit so I can zoom in a little bit closer and easier back in. So let's go back in a little bit further maybe down a little bit more so it's clean and comfortable for everybody to see. It's not easy for me to draw like that but it's clean and comfortable for you guys and that's what's important. So let's make sure our, our uh, T-square is lined up with our camera so we got it. Okay so now we want to put some figures in our composition. So these all these figures are going to be just sort of generic men and women at work. They're going to be like on a rebel base of Star Wars, right? Um, so, let, and they're all going to be six feet, and so that's important. So let me put the measurement and say over here that the figures, so all at six, six units tall, six units tall, all of them, right in through there. So we have that. Okay, so let's put our first... A uh, figure six units tall, and we can we can signify our figures really easily with just straight lines. Remembering in our first first back our first couple of lessons. So let's put our first figure in maybe two units over here, okay, and then one unit deep, maybe standing at this table, and we can put a daughter mark there, and let's find six units tall. Let me do it in red so we can start to distinguish a little bit. So now we have to go six units tall. We'll mark over here and look over. One, two, three, four, five, six. Bring it over to there. And there's where our six foot figure is right there in our composition. So let me sketch out a competent looking figure. We can do it together if you want. So we'll sketch out a little bit. So maybe this person is, you know, what's the story now? Maybe he's, he or she's standing there right with, and they're looking down at slightly down at the table so I'll silhouette these in and they're maybe handling some maps or some some information on uh, a new rebel base in Star Wars or information on the Empire and so we're just gonna draw his back here gonna sketch him in they don't have to be fancy we're just gonna get the idea of environment and scale Maybe one elbow is showing an arm coming down a little bit, and maybe this arm comes down. It should be a little bit foreshortened, right? And through here, and maybe reaching down over on the table, like so. Okay. And then we'll put on the back end, the buttock, and go in through here, like so. Okay. And then we'll just remember the leg, the end of the end of the, the heels will be back. Right in through there, and they're just kind of standing in a relaxed, sort of uh, resting, sort of standing pose, I suppose. I would think. Right in through there. And then the knees can be bent just a little bit, probably. Heel there, and the, the foot would come, shoe would come back with the boot, whatever they're wearing. Right in, so, right in through there. And then the other leg down and through. Okay, so we have have that and clean that up a little bit to see. Okay, so we have our first figure at six at six feet in our composition. Okay, let's put another one in and let's put this figure at profile. Let me sharpen up my my pencil a bit. So it's important. I always break the leads in the beginning because I make them too long. 
So let's give yourself time to sharpen up a little bit. And I'm going to pull in a little bit too so you can see this cleanly and clearly. I think it's important to see it as, as, as up close as you can. And I'll pull this up. There we go. Since it's relatively tiny. All right, so let's put another six foot figure in our composition. Okay, here we go. And let's put this figure now a little bit deeper. And so it's going to be standing over here, but looking in kind of be at the table here a little bit. So let's put this figure in now. One, two, three, four, five units in. One, two, three, four, five units. And then one, two, three units deep. One, two, three. So five units in, three units deep. I'll put a little mark there, a little little dot. And then it's going to be six units tall. So I'm going to throw up a, a horizontal for, for right now. And let's go find six units now. So let's bring, let's go back over to where her, his or her line is right there. And let's go up six units. One, two, three, four, five, six right there. I find it on the other wall and I can slide over that measurement, boom, right there. And I was pretty close already, right there. Nice dot. That's my height. So that's a six foot figure now a little bit deeper than our first figure. So let's draw that figure in. And that figure is going to be leaning over a little bit and looking at the same kind of maps that our other figure is. So we'll draw our little head here. Maybe this has got like a little helmet on. Maybe goggles or something. I don't want to get too Darth Vader -y here. Okay, and so we'll have that. So there's the head. And you can do whatever you want with your figures. It doesn't have to be like mine. But I'm just giving you an example. So we have now a figure here. I'll put the torso there, and then the arms and the hands can come down. Kind of like these big battle jackets, maybe. Hand coming down and through here, and arm and hand and through there. Who knows what they're looking at? Maybe there's a hand from the back and through there. And then we'll get sort of the, like they have a vest on. Then we'll get the buttock in through here. Okay, and then we'll have a leg coming down. Now, here's where my red line is. Now, notice I've got them bent a little bit, and that's okay. We're just getting a good estimate of where our figures are at. If they're not, they may be, if they're standing completely st a straight up erect, they would be six foot. Now, if they're bent slightly, if they stood up erect, they might be a little bit taller than six foot. That doesn't, that doesn't concern me. I'm not, I don't have to be that accurate. I have to be close, but I don't have to be that accurate. So we have our calf here. Maybe there's some kind of stylish knee pad thing, and then the foot coming out over and through there. Maybe there's another foot that would just sort of emerge maybe right back and through there. Okay, so we have our two figures there at six feet. All right, so let's put another figure six feet tall on top of this box. Let's do that uh, now and see how that uh, works out for our, uh, our figure here. Okay, so we need six six foot unit. So there's a couple ways that we can do that. And so we can find out where this figure's standing about right here, plot them down, and bring them over and count up six foot units. So I'm going to say that this figure, I'll put it in red, and I'm going to go closer even in the camera. There we go, so we can see. And so I'm going to say that this figure is standing about right there at six feet tall. Okay. And so I'm going to raise up from that point a straight line. I don't know how tall I need to go yet. So we need six feet. How do we do that? Well, we could do a couple of things. Since it's elevated, we could do a reference line from an elevated you know, point. But we've already got scaling over here. So let's just, do, let's just use that. So let's go over from, a, from the bottom of this person over through here. Okay. Now they're sitting. Um, in terms of their scale, how far you know, in are they? So we have to come one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? And they're probably halfway. So right in through here, that's one, two, 
it's for, it's how many units deep is our box there so we have to think about that our box is five units deep so about one two and a half about right there that's where we need to go from okay so I know it's getting complicated hang with me I'll show you right in through there over to here okay and then we can't stop counting till we get to here so I need to bring that over to to there so we can count and so right in through here on this line we start counting bingo right there now we're almost at four units so I can say from here I'll just bring it up just a little bit one two three four five and six right there now we can bring that over bingo right to there and that's roughly our six unit figure and we can figure that out nice and cleanly right there so there's our six unit figure and that person is even deeper in space so they've got to be visually smaller in space and so that was a very clean clear way of doing it now you could have guesstimated and I bet you probably if you're good enough you could probably boom do it perfectly but sometimes you just want that reassurance of total accuracy alright so let's draw another figure in through here standing on this platform who knows what they're doing so we'll have a little head in through here shoulders in through here Okay, and maybe they're looking out towards us a little bit. Hand and arm in through here. Arm coming down. And then maybe their torso, their pelvic region goes back this way. Leg coming down. And over to this platform that you're standing on. And maybe here. And then over like so. All right, who knows what they're doing, but we just want to get the idea of referencing and scaling to as well, okay? Now, let's put, we've got one, two, three. Let's put one more figure at six foot, but let's say that figure is now down on the ground in through here because we're going to put C3PO and we're going to put R2D2 up here so let's put one more figure on the ground laying down but we want that figure now to be six feet laying down now there's a lot of ways we can do it the easiest way is just to scale it you could take this figure lay it down and then project it back to the vanishing point and then find out how deep we want it that's referencing let's use scaling back here so let's start right at this point and I'm gonna go how deep do I want to go go as deep as you want I'm just gonna start right in through here that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten on on eleven I'm gonna put a dot big dot right there so you can see it okay on eleven and I'm gonna go over just six units that's gonna give me six feet watch so one two three four five and six so that figures laying down right there. Okay, and their feet or their head if we wanted could be touching right in through there. Maybe maybe they're they're doing some kind of electrical work and they this person's got to lay down in order to do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the head in through here, kind of leaning upward, kind of looking at the individual, like so. Okay, and then their body, their chest, and then their their buttock is gonna be a little higher, just a silhouette. Okay, and I'm going to have one leg up, okay, like so, touching through there, and then the other leg will be resting down, so it's at about six foot. Now this figure is going to be holding his hand up, like so, this figure like so, and maybe they're going to have some kind of uh, pulley thing that they're, that they're doing, some kind of electrical wiring, I don't know, I'll put little, little things in through here, and they're um, working on some kind of everyday worker work who knows all right now we have a six foot figure laying down in through here so let's pull out and take a look and see what we've wrought what we're looking at here let's go deeper out there we go bring that back in yep you can see it good now we've got just two figures left now we're going to do R2 and we're going to do C3PO 
and we're going to put them back there. And we can put them back there at their scale pretty easily because we've got this scale running along here. And they're going to be, this is a this is a glass wall, and they're going to be looking out onto us, I guess, just to supervise and see how things are going. All right, so R2 is going to be, R2, D2 will be three and a half units tall. Okay, and then C3PO will be, what do I have in my notes? Five and a half units tall. So C3PO will be two units taller than R2. So R2 will be, we'll start with R2 first. We'll bring him in a little bit. We'll start him about right in through here. And I'll do this in red and let me go in now. So you can see this further. Let's see how deep we can go. All right, now we can really see. Look how deep we can go. Excellent. Okay, so now you can really get in there. You can get closer than I can. So we want him at three and a half units tall. Okay, so one, two, three. That's four, so about right there. Okay, I'm going to bring that line over right there, and we want to put him about right here. And he always, he always kind of leans over a little bit. So we'll tilt him just a little bit, and I'll make that a little bit shorter. But that's three and a half units right there. So he's kind of just basically a cylinder. And we'll bring him down like so, right? And so you would kind of see underneath him just a little bit like that. And we'll just kind of put him in silhouette like he is, like he is there, a little, little top part and a little underneath of the leg here. We won't see completely underneath at the end there because they're standing on the ground which is here and it goes back in perspective. That's important to know. And then we have the other part here, there. So there he is. Okay. Now C3PO is five units tall and a half. All right. We can easily find that. Let's go back to here. One, two, three, four, five, and a little bit of half. Right in through there. So he's head, he's just barely going to fit. He's right at the top and through there. So let's bring that down and we'll bring a line down. For that so he's five and a half units now they're both shorter than our four four six foot figures uh, six figures over here so we'll put c3po next to r2 and we'll have him through here and we'll have he's always kind of touching him over up there like that and we have his hand out like so We'll put his midsection, then a leg coming down, and we won't see completely all of it. They'll be just a little covered up, and there we go. Now I can put make this a little darker back in through here, that back wall. And so now we have them looking through the glass, supervising and looking to see how our project is coming. Let's widen out a little bit. Now we can really see what we're doing and see our product here that we're working on and this can be a thumbnail sketch for a major you know finish you could put all kinds of detail you know you have everything you want to do here now you can finish it out and add more figures to it I'm just going to give it a final uh, quick version touch I'm just going to, to darken in this control panel just a little bit so we can you can see that in the final drawing right there I'll color that in or tone it in action there's no color Tone it in where we have the uh, the actual control panel, and there you go. So that's probably the most complex uh, linear, formal linear perspective room that we've done so far. So it was quite a bit. We had six figures total. Four of the six were all six figures, right? Six foot or six units. One laying down, and one we pushed back and we elevated up even two as well. And then we found our other two with our scaling up and through here. So the scaling really really helps as well. So there you go, another challenging, I think, you know, very kind of relatively basic, but, but a challenging uh, system of formal perspective to get the accuracy. Now we know how deep, how wide, how tall objects are, and how, how far away they're positioned inside of um, an accurate vision of a picture plane. Okay, there you go. So we have, I'm going to add one more exercise to this first section of formal linear perspective, and that is going to be a two-point 
uh, house and I want to demonstrate rules number one, two, and three and four with incline and decline. Okay, so I'll see you soon on that. I'll be right back with our last exercise. Cool.